Calling all small town residents, it seems small towns hold stories of horror and mystery. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. It's good to see you made it back for another episode. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true small town horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. Now, let's get into these creepy and allegedly true small town horror stories that'll keep you up tonight. So, for a little bit of backstory, you can call me Jay and I am 19. This all happened on July 3rd, 2020. I live in a rural area on the East Coast. My house is surrounded by forest and a bit of swampy patch. Anyway, on to my story. My friend's mom invited me over for a small pre-4th of July fireworks show at their house. It was around 9.30 and I had just finished dinner, so my mom and I were both going over. I threw some flip-flops on and grabbed a drink and my flashlight and headed out the door. I unhooked the bike from the chain and pushed it down into the driveway. I turned it around and biked down the dark tree-covered back road towards his house. As I rode, holding my flashlight in one hand and steering with the other, I began hearing something, like somebody whispering in my ear. I looked over and didn't seem to see anything. I could not understand what this thing was trying to say, but as I got further down the road, I heard more of these whispers coming from my left, and then to my right. The whispers grew louder and, and louder. My mind starts to hurt from hearing all the whispers around me. Then, something stopped my heart right there. A scream from in the woods way off in the distance, like some woman getting murdered. It made me want to stop, but I couldn't, so I kept pedaling harder, but as I pedaled harder... I heard the screaming getting closer and closer as it started to follow me. Then I heard something else from behind me as well. It sounds like somebody running and laughing psychotically like a murderer would. I pedaled even harder and faster. My legs started to cramp but I didn't care. I wanted to get out of the trees and into an open area. I could not tell if my mind was playing tricks on me. But I felt like I was so much further away from the opening than it was before. So I just kept on pedaling as I saw a car go down the street. I was trying to get closer to it so I could get into the light. I kept going with the full intent of getting away from whatever was happening. As I neared the opening finally, I heard the whisper again in my ear. It felt like something breathing against my ear as it spoke a few words that I finally understood. Protect your shadow. It spoke as I felt this icy cold breath brush my cheeks. I soon arrived there in probably about nine minutes, which I could have been there a whole lot later if I hadn't been dealing with whatever that was. I pulled in, and we had a good time lighting off fireworks, big bangs, and sprayers, and all the fun things you could possibly do with a fireworks kit. But something happened while I was there. Something had happened between my friend and his little brother, where it ended up with his little brother on the ground crying and the big brother getting backhanded by his dad. As soon as the backhand hit, I heard the snap of a finger by my ear, and I turned around and there was nobody there. The voice whispered again, The shadow is now ours. Thank you for the treasure. I froze in that split second and thought, What's happening right now? Like, what the heck? I turned around to see the little brother get up and sit in a chair, and have an ice pack on his cheek. As the night went on, I heard a whipping in the slight breeze. Then I heard what sounded like a cracking off in the woods. I snapped my head to the right to look out into the open farm pasture. As the full moon lit up the ground a bit, I saw a shadow outline of something within the tree line. It started running towards me as I fell back into the chair. Behind me, as I got closer to the fire, we were sitting around. It got right in front of me as I sat and staring into this thing's red eyes. The feeling of dread and fear took over me. I did not know what to say. I did not want to ask them if they saw it too, because then they might think I was crazy. 
But here I was, staring at this thing straight in its eyes. We are not here to harm you. We are here to harvest the shadows. It spoke in a whisper, right in my ear again. I stood up and walked towards the shadow, and as soon as I got to where it stood, it vanished into thin air. I jumped back and looked back around trying to figure out where it went. I looked over to my right in the doorway, the barn. The shadow made the motion of, come here. I looked at them and told them I was going to go to the bathroom. So I walked to the barn and peeked inside of it. I heard the pig squeal a little as I felt a cold breeze blast into me. I looked down the walkway of the barn and heard something creak above me. I looked up and there was a shadow crouched on a beam above me, looking almost like a Spider-Man type creature. It had a weird posture. I nearly fell, trying to back out of there, freaking out. It jumped down in front of me, the impact making no noise at all. I stumble back, falling on my ass. I back up and my back hits the barn door. It slowly walked towards me and crouches in front of me and holds out its hand. In its hand sat a dark version of my friend. His shadow. What are you doing with it? I had no idea if this thing could hear me. It made a small sighing noise as I saw something like a mouth form on this thing. Its yellow teeth and red eyes were absolutely terrifying me. It stares at me as it holds out the small version of my friend. It smiles and hands me the small figure and I look at it. It gave a small chuckle and vanished again. I slowly begin to stand up as the light slowly starts to flicker on and off in the barn. I start looking around, scared out of my mind. I hear laughter all around me and then something goes by flying. I run to the door and try to open it. The door would not open though. As I turned and looked as the light shut off, and then it began to flicker like a strobe light would. As I looked down to the big barn doors in front of the tractor, sitting on the tractor was that shadow person. It stood up and jumped down from the tractor, walking towards me. With every flicker, it got closer and closer to me. It got right up into my face and blew a huge breath of cold, freezing air into my face as I grabbed the doorknob and opened it as I ran through the door, slamming it. I was terrified of what had happened. I had heard a giant bang above me as a firework went off. I slowly walked back to the fire. My heart was beating like a bass drum, and my face was paler than an albino. I sat down in my chair and watched the fireworks go off, hearing them explode. And as they explode, they light up the field a little bit. And I keep thinking I see that shadow out of the corner of my eye. As we winded down for the night sometime around midnight... We went in and got a ride from my friend's dad and his truck. As we rode back to my place, I got a headache that was pounding in my head constantly. I looked over. Sitting across from me was the shadow. It gave me the motion to shush, and I did. I just rode in the truck until we got back, and I got out and unloaded my bike from the bed of the truck and locked it back up on the porch. I went into the house and told my parents about all the fireworks, and they were happy to hear it. I did not say a word about anything else that I encountered, because I did not want to end up in a psych ward. So I just went upstairs and lay down. As I laid in bed, the shadow sat at the edge of my bed and looked at me. Keep hold of your friend's shadow, or else you'll pay the consequences. And with that it snapped its fingers and disappeared. And with that I haven't seen it till this day. I still to this day have no idea what it was. I don't know if it was a demon or a poltergeist, but whatever it was could have killed me or taken my body over or whatever. But it seemed like it was playing games with me. I still have that shadowy statue in my room, put away somewhere. I know if I'll need it, I'll be able to find it again. I still want to know what it was, but I doubt I, I want to know. This thing terrified me more than whatever I had to deal with months ago. The unknown is truly unknown and it's something we might never understand. You can call me Brent. Some background information on this story is that it took place around November 20th of 2020 in a small town of Virginia. It all began on the ride from point A to point B. Point B is about a four-hour drive from my house. On the way there, 
I was talking to my uncle about cryptids and how the mountain range we were hunting in was known for sightings. Some may be real and some may not be so true. It's not really my place to say if it is or isn't, but that was all going to change the next day. At the time, I was 17 years old and we were deer hunting. We had soon gotten to our campground and set up the trucks and campers. Once we were all set up, we grabbed our rifles and headed to our spot. It was my first time in this part of the woods, so I had no spot in particular. So it was just me, my grandfather, who you can call N, and my uncle, who you can call NC, and my little cousin, who you can call NS. We had driven out to some spots to check out, but at one of these spots, there was a corpse of a doe that was mutilated and shredded to bits. The range was known for bears, but there were no bear in this area. We had thought maybe it was just coyotes or other scavengers, so I brushed it off. I soon decided to break away and walk about four miles north to this one spot that my uncle decided to talk about. I carried my Winchester 3030 rifle and walkie-talkie. As I branched off, everything was like a nature walk in the range. Birds chirping, insects buzzing, and the wind whistling. It was serene and nice. I decided to take a spot in a valley that had a decent view. A couple of hours passed by and there was nothing really in sight. I called over the walkie-talkie and stated that I was heading back. On the way back, there were tracks from a deer in some mud that was not too far away from me. I continued around and followed these tracks. I put a round in the chamber just in case. You know, maybe if I had seen it, I would just get a quick shot at it. I got about halfway back to where I was supposed to be when I saw a head poke out from behind the tree. It was a ragged looking six point buck. I slowly pulled the rifle up and in the scope was that buck, but something was different. Its body looked as if the deer was, well, something from a cheap zombie movie. At the time, I was just reading about a disease going around which made deer look and act very different. I dropped the sight when it took off into the brush but it came off as odd because it stopped and had its antlers peered over the small pines. I called back over and told my uncle and told him that I had seen a buck and described its features. He saved me from just hurrying up and getting back due to my distance and the sun setting. I had gotten back to him in the truck. We made our way back to the camp and that night, everything seemed usual and normal. I had soon gotten to sleep at around 12 eastern time. The next morning I woke up in a splitting headache and thought as if somebody was watching me during the night. We had all suited up and stepped out of the camper to see tracks around our site. But it was not only one set, it were multiple sets, but it looked like it was going from human to deer and vice versa. We decided to head back out to the spots we took the previous day, but this time it was just me and my uncle since he wanted to see the spot I had taken. Then. I showed him the slot where the tracks were. He had just told me to be aware and to call him over on the walkie if anything was weird. He headed back to his original spot, and I changed spots. I went about a mile east of my position. I was now sitting on the downslope of a valley with a stream running through it. An hour or so passed by with nothing happening. I then heard a set of steps closing near me but it was more like a person walking on the leaves and not like an animal on all fours. I called over the walkie-talkie to see if my uncle was the one who somehow was making it to my position. He stated that he wasn't, but to be on high alert since hunters are out here. But as he was speaking, a loud crash came from near me, as if someone had thrown a giant rock into the tree beside me. My instinct was to kick around into the chamber and send a warning shot. Once fired, the steps sprinted off and faded away, but not as far as I would think. They stopped about 75 feet, and then they looked at me. I could just feel this sensation of being stared at. My uncle called over and told me to get back ASAP since he heard the crash and the gunfire. I made my way up to the incline and put a new round into the chamber. As I start to see the crest, I notice the same six-point deer standing there staring at me with these dark black eyes, empty, as if they were just bottomless pits. It had shown itself when it stood up with the bones cracking and claws emerging from its skin. 
At this point, the body was mutilated and still changing. I send another round into it. I get it in the side, and it lets out a deafening screech. I make a break for the path. I could hear it on the pathway gaining on me as I was slowing. I made it to where the wood line breaks to see my uncle taking a form as if he were waiting to shoot the thing behind me. As I get closer, I turn around to see nothing. I explain what had happened, and he in all no doubt believed me. He had stated that this wasn't the first time he had had odd things happen to him while in these woods. He stated that he had an encounter when he was my age with my grandfather. We soon picked up the pace and packed up everything and got into the truck. We got inside and sped out of there. I hope this piques your interest and I can hopefully figure out what was living in the mountain ranges of Virginia. I will never visit those parts again. You couldn't pay me to. If you believe my encounter, thank you, because it has taken a lot to bring this out into the world. If you do not believe me, then there are other stories on this page that still make you think that I'm not lying. Thank you, Swamp Dweller, again. Your stories help me see that I'm not losing my mind. My name is Brent, and I will soon ask my uncle if he is fine with sharing the other stories of his. Sorry to interrupt these stories, Swamp Folk, but I just need to take a quick minute to say thank you to today's sponsor, Manly Bank. Guys, for the better part of our lives, our better halves have been fantasizing about the perfect wedding ring. Cut, clarity, carrot, color, you name it. But for us, we're not so picky most of the time. I've had a hard time finding the perfect ring and one that fits my style. Honestly, going to stores is just so stressful most of the time. No worries, though. No more of that. Manly Band is here to rescue from an otherwise hellish band buying experience. Manly Bands offers your hand the freedom to look how you want it in just about every type of earthly material imaginable. I chose the narrator for simple and obvious reasons. I really enjoy how it looks and it just fits what I do. To get started, order the Manly Ring Sizer from Manly Bands to ensure that your ring will fit perfectly during work and play. Once you know your size, it's time for the fun part. Manly Bands has an insane selection of materials to choose from. Gold, wood, antler, steel, dinosaur bone, and even the meteorites that killed them. You can also choose from one of Manly Band's curated collections like the Jack Daniels Whiskey Barrel Collection. Once you've selected your band, Manly Band offers free shipping worldwide, a 30-day exchange policy, and a free warranty. While there might be a 50% chance of your marriage working out, there's a 100% chance that you're going to love your band. To order your Manly Band and get 21% off, plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash swamped. That's manlybands.com slash swamped for 21% off. Manly Band, the best damn rings, period. Now, back to the stories. Hi, Swamp Dweller. I've been a fan for a long time, and I've been wanting to share some stories with you. This story takes place in southeastern Kentucky, and is told by my father, who used to be an avid hunter when I was younger. He and his friend would go hunting almost every weekend. They would mostly hunt deer and go to various hunting grounds around the area. They would go very early in the morning, so early that the sun would not even be out yet, this morning was not any different, only this time my dad and his friend decided to split up for a better chance at grabbing a deer, which is nothing they hadn't done before. Neither one of them was in a deer stand, just regular camo and get up for hunting deer. This was also during a time when cell phones were not very common. This will be important for later. So if one of them shot, the other would follow the sound of the shot and catch up. They never went too far from one another. On this day, they got to the woods and went their separate ways. My dad has a flashlight with him to help him see where he's going. Once he found a good enough spot by a large tree, he fixed himself there, loaded up his rifle, and turned his flashlight off. He began to wait. It was so dark that he could barely see in front of his face. After what seemed like an hour, my dad noticed that it was extremely quiet. He was straining his ears to hear anything. Then out of nowhere, and only a few feet in front of him, came a very low and guttural growl like he had never heard before. The hair stood up all over his body, and all he could do was freeze. 
He said the growl was deeper than anything that he had ever heard before. He has been hunting in the woods for years and has come across bears, bobcats, coyotes, and other predators of the like. But nothing has ever come close to this type of growl. He says this thing was very large easily from the sound of it. He says the scariest thing about this growl is that he never heard the creature coming, and he never heard it leave. He sat there frozen, not knowing what to do. He was afraid that if he moved, he might come off as a threat to whatever this thing was. So he sat there, waiting. He waited until the sun rose just enough that he could see all around him. There were never any tricks or any signs that anything had been there. It was October, so there were plenty of leaves and sticks on the ground, but there was only silence. My dad eventually caught up with his friend and they left. Since that day, my dad went hunting a few more times but then stopped completely. It's been about 20 years since then, but he still gets chills when telling this story. If you know my dad, you know that this is a very straightforward man, a no BS type of person. He does not believe in ghosts or cryptids or anything of the such. So, it's super creepy to listen to him tell this story. Hi Swamp Dweller, thanks for sharing my story. This probably isn't the most dramatic story, but it was certainly very strange when it happened. So I used to live in a small town with an upscale downtown area. My sister at the time worked as a journalist at a local paper, and so found out some interesting historical events. One event is that the entire family that was nearby where we lived had drowned in a nearby pond, located in the center of an orange grove because of some sort of freak accident. The cemetery where the family's gravestone was located was very close to the downtown area. So, my sister and I have always had a casual interest in the supernatural, nothing major. When my sister suggested we visit the cemetery, I was all in. There were two graves that were of particular interest to us, one being that of the drowned family, and the other being a very old marker near the center of the cemetery that simply read, Mother. So, one night we ready ourselves for a bit of spooky fun and head out for the cemetery. It's a quiet town, so the cemetery is always open. We enter and begin heading towards the center of the cemetery. The path we took led us beneath some lights. I noticed one flickering as we passed under it, and then stopped. I did not think much of it. We arrived at the headstone of the family that had drowned, and we were just kind of quietly looking around when I heard a distinct growl. I stopped and looked for the source. Nothing behind any tree or other headstones were nearby and nothing that I could see with my flashlight was further away. I did not mention it, and my sister did not seem to indicate that she ever heard it, so we moved on. We finally came to Mother's headstone, and once again quietly just looked around for a bit. Again I heard that growl, and I find no source of where it could be coming from, so I finally asked my sister if she had heard it. She said yes, but didn't want to freak me out. Talking about it later, we both agreed that the quality of the sound of the growl was strange, like it had been inside of your head, but we weren't certain. So, we decided we had overstayed our welcome and went to leave. On the way out, the same light flickered again as we walked under it. I made sure to say out loud that we were sorry for imposing, and we meant no harm and were only curious. But to be safe, I also said firmly that nothing in that cemetery was to follow us home. And that's it. Nothing very climactic, but also a very unnerving time. I've had some strange experiences I might share in the future as well. Hey Swamp Dweller, huge fan of your show. I listen to your episodes every night. They really help me fall asleep. Since I'm a fan of your show, I figured that I would share a story with you. So this story didn't happen to me, but to my older sister, who I will call Evie for privacy reasons. So, this happened in December of 2020. My sister was in Japan for a year teaching English for 2019. She came back home in January 2020 and was going back to Japan in March to teach English for three years. 
But when COVID-19 hit, she was unable to do that and had to stay home and try to find work here in the U.S. One day, Evie decided to take her long-haired German Shepherd Sheba for a walk. Keep in mind, we live in a very rural area, but there are still houses around not too far from us. As she was walking, my sister was about to put her headphones in to listen to your podcast and was passing this new house that someone builds in, I think December or something like that. We only met the guy once, and he seemed nice enough, but we don't normally talk to strangers. A lot of the times, the neighbors prefer to be left alone anyway. As she was passing the driveway of the house and was about to play your podcast, she heard someone running, like full-on sprinting towards her. She turns around and sees this heavy guy running down the driveway towards her, she began to walk faster and get past the driveway. She was ready to scream at the top of her lungs in case the guy was after her. After a minute of walking, Evie turns around and sees this guy standing at the edge of the driveway, just looking at her with his mouth half open. She later told me that there was no expression on his face. No anger, lust, just nothing at all. It was completely blank. She kept walking, looking forward as she walked, she could see and feel that his eyes were on her. She turned to walk up this hill, and out of the corner of her eye, she could see him watching her still. After a few more minutes of walking, Evie stopped and called her dad to pick her up. When they drove past the house, the guy was nowhere to be found. When they drove past the house, the guy was nowhere to be found. The weirdest thing about this story is that the guy isn't even the owner of the house. Hell, she had never even seen this guy before in her entire life which just makes it even more scary thinking that this is just some random guy sitting on somebody's property, doing God knows what. So that's the story. I'm sorry if it's not long, or even terribly scary, but I figured I would share it since I really love your show and I do plan to submit more stories. Thanks again, and if you decide to share this story, be safe out there everyone. And, not just from COVID, but from people who have ill intent on others. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true small town horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's a small town story or something different, please be sure to submit it at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going on a daily basis. If you enjoyed the stories in tonight's episode, please be sure to hit that like button, as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it in the algorithm, and that's incredibly helpful to the show. I'd also love to know in the comments down below, what story was your favorite tonight? If you're listening to this on iTunes or another podcast platform, please give this a 5 star rating, as it's incredibly helpful over there. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new episode as I upload them nearly every single day on all things natural and supernatural. If you're on the go, but don't have YouTube Premium, but still want to listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller Scary Stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and just about anywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. If you would like to support The Swamp outside of hitting that like button, giving us a 5 star rating on iTunes, and subscribing to the YouTube channel, maybe check out the merch store. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, and more. I'd love to see you guys wearing some cool Swamp threads. Be sure to join me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.